Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, Eloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Excelsior, Goatlabe, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hoppinskip, and Valandruk. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Wasteland 3. As we uh, continue our investigation into the cryptic cults of Colorado. Last time we uh, stopped just short of breaching the security room in Cheyenne Mountain. And the lag does seem to have dissipated, so uh, let's jump right in. We've got five turrets and three switches to deal with. Plus, whatever reinforcements start rolling in once this fight gets going. Oh, shoot. Uh, Tall. Lockdown override progress. One of four override switches engaged. Thank goodness it was Dahl. She's the hardest to actually detect. So, I had ample time to respond once I realized she was too close. Well, that's disappointing. Okay, let's focus on clearing this side first. You know, I really thought these things would be more durable. No central uh, processor to target, so we can't remote hack them. But... Let's see if we can manually hack them. Nice. Okay, slight change of plans. We'll just try to clear the whole room in one turn. Nice, nice. Can we tag the other one? Oh man, that was... That was way more effective than I thought it would be. And I think we're done. Man, if I'd uh, realized that was going to be so easy, I would have uh, I would have taken care of it last time around. Lockdown protocol deactivated. Thank you for your cooperation. Security turret shell. This metallic shell is specifically shaped to deflect incoming bullets, all while looking like a fancy video game controller. Does it? 
Security Turret Optics Giant security turrets use a set of these to triangulate their death zone. Death zone being a technical term. As always, the uh, writers had way too much fun writing these random descriptions. Detach security turret. Ripped out of its machine network, this turret gazes wistfully at you, eager to fire a, f <laughs> a, a large quantity of searing hot laser beams directly into your face. Keep it classy, Wasteland. Probably a bit late to uh, suggest that, though. Interesting. A high-volume energy machine gun. Not exactly Rhett's thing, but still a fun find. Entry control system online. Please enter your command. Security status? Security lockdown activated. Gosh, I guess we should uh, do something about that. Security lockdown deactivated. Well, that was easy. All right, moving on. Good job shutting down the security alert, friends. Well done. Yeah, we're pretty great. Yes, good job. Let's go in. Onward, my friends. And also, Carbuncle. The door's closed. I hear fighting in the camp. We've got to get in there. All in due time, Carbuncle. The holy book on top of this lectern is entitled The Collected Teachings of Enrico Fermi. Swanky. Another security room. Ah, nice. Crystal shards. That's what the uranium sprayer uses. Though, uh, we're gonna need a whole lot more. Door sealed. Control terminal active. Oh, okay. I see. Not much point in slapping random buttons. I don't think that ever actually works. And again. So I guess we have to go that way. Run! 
Jim, all right. Iridium! No! Not that way! This is, uh, this DLC is so gross. It's like John Carpenter's The Thing level of body horror. Job well done, Rangers. Thanks again for saving us, Rangers. Nope. No. Oh, God. And we've got math. I hate this. <laughs> oh, Rangers, we're inside at last. And it seems not a moment too soon. Yeah, thanks for getting us in here before Abbot Deuterium and the Nucleus <laughs> massacred everyone. And I'm sure the Proteus and <laughs> Sister Polyp over there are gonna wanna thank you for it. Uh, is the Proteus that Mass over there? That's them, yeah. Our blessed leader. Aren't they awesome? They'll definitely want to talk to you. Uh, excellent. And that would also be a perfect time to ask them about our, uh, objectives. Wouldn't it, Rangers? Go on, then. I don't want to. I don't want to look at that thing. Am I... Is that going to get me demonetized? I mean... Oh, God. I mean, I do like his hat. I'll just... Uh, I'll focus on the hat. Friends, saviors, over here. <laughs> yes, I, I too want to vomit until I die. Oh, is it trying to talk? Do not be alarmed. The blessed radiation has devolved our beloved Proteus's speech beyond the ability of the uninitiated to understand. But I can translate. I am Sister Polyp, speaker for the Proteus. Uh huh. Sorry, Proteus. That is, I'm speaker until the true speaker, Father Bezor, returns to us. If he does. The Proteus thanks you for your timely intervention. Your arrival has spared us all much unnecessary violence. What would you ask of them? Yeah, uh, calling it right now. Polyp there is some flavor of bad guy. She's clearly in some way involved with the disappearance of the person she is currently replacing. Otherwise, they would not have had that very conspicuous exchange. Also, this uh, this really does feel like a twisted Wizard of Oz scenario. So, so that thing can actually talk? You're not just making this up? Not at all. The Proteus is a fully conscious being and wiser than all the rest of us combined. What would you like to ask? Okay, I, I do have a question for the great and powerful Proteus. Uh, what am I looking at, exactly? Well, now I feel silly for asking. The Proteus says they are the devolved protoplasm of many primordialists, coalesced into a single unified mass. They are... them. They are also the salvation of humanity, and the end of all conflict. As when all of us are one, there will be no other left to hate. I'm currently hyper-focused on just the words, uh, the uh, text, because I really don't want to look at anything else. So, so how did this happen? <laughs> The Proteus says they were created when the Holy Detonation shined its divine light upon its faithful servants. And with each follower who devolves and joins them, they grow larger and wiser and more complete. 
For that, they are grateful to the Holy Detonation, which is the beginning of us and the ending of us, the Alpha and the Omega, forever and ever. Amen. Sure, sure. That that doesn't sound at all like an eternal waking nightmare. And the uh, Holy Detonation? <laughs> The Proteus says that all you must do is look behind them. Our god, the Holy Detonation, resides within its blessed chamber, bathing us in the light of creation and evolution. It's like a miniature sun. It unfolds us in the warm embrace of its glow, which brings oneness, peace, and the salvation of the whole cursed world. You, uh, you do realize, though, that this whole place is just a pre-war military lab, and, and that thing behind you is clearly some sort of old-world experiment, right? The Proteus says all gods have to start somewhere, and most were just men. The Holy Detonation was born as a star is born, and what man can say that? Okay, sure, yeah, I mean, all mythologies have to start somewhere, so I guess this is as good a place as any. And it is true. No man is a contained fusion blast. Yeah. So the whole point of your religion is to let this thing melt you all into one giant flesh blob. Am, am I getting that right? <laughs> The Proteus says when all are one, no one will be lonely. And what could be more joyous than that? Oh, you know, uh, not being fused into a hellish mass of conjoined tumors would be pretty great. So who's this uh, Father Bezor you mentioned? He's gone missing? Father Bezor is... was... The true speaker for the Proteus, and their second in command. He both interpreted and carried out the Proteus's wishes. I am only his stand in. The Proteus believes the Nucleists have captured him and are holding him in a cell in the lower levels. They fear they are performing experiments on him. Others among us fear he is already dead. I'm sorry, Proteus, but it is a possibility we have to consider. Well, now they're making it so obvious, I'm starting to think that uh, it might just be a red herring. Or like a reverse red herring, where they, they make it obvious so you'll dismiss it. Right, so the uh, Nucleus, what, what are they doing to poor Father Bezor? The Proteus says Abbot Deuterium is obsessed with manipulating the process of mutation. They fear Bezor will be mutated in ways he does not wish. <laughs> the Proteus says they pray for his safe return. But let us get back to the matter at hand. Yeah, very, very subtle. Dismissing the uh, wish for a safe return. So what was that we walked into when we first came in with the um, other rival cultists? They were nucleists, like the ones you fought outside. Deuterium, their leader, wanted to kill the Proteus. Thanks to you, they fled instead. But you've only postponed the inevitable. They will try again. You see, to ensure its safety, entering the Chamber of the Holy Detonation requires two codes. The Proteus holds one, Deuterium the other. Thus, in the weeks since the Nucleus split from us, neither side has been able to worship in its presence. We have tried to convince Deuterium to rejoin us so we may all worship together, but he has refused. Instead, he wants to take the Proteus's code so only Nucleus may worship. This is intolerable. You know, nightmare fuel aside, this is actually pretty fascinating. Let me guess, the uh, Proteus keeps his coat in his hat? It is tattooed on one of their inner members. 
meaning Deuterium would have to kill them to get it. And if we want Deuterium's code, well, that would be difficult, as he's locked himself in the power storage facility. Right, naturally. Not only is there no getting down there, the facility is where the Nucleus perform their rituals, passing the holy energy of the batteries through their bodies. They would be at their most powerful there. But we must get in, for if we can't extricate Deuterium and get the code, we may never worship before the holy detonation again. A calamity. This could be the way to get Theo what he wanted. Lucia, I absolutely love you, but uh, do you think you could maybe let our actual mutant science expert get a word in edgewise every once in a while? Ah, very true, Proteus. The Proteus says there may be one way to reach him. Deuterium's girlfriend, the Angel Iridium, was so frightened by your entry, she ran the wrong way. She could be a bargaining chip dangerous one. She is hiding in the cooling chamber over there, but in her distress, she is emitting deadly levels of radiation. It would be impossible to get near her, even for those such as ourselves who thrive on the glow. Well, uh, that sounds awfully sleazy, but uh, I will certainly take it under consideration. But uh, what exactly caused this rift in the first place? What, what caused you to start feuding with the uh, Nucleist? The Proteus says the Nucleists believe we're degenerates, unworthy of the Holy Detonation. Even though we've served it faithfully for years, they want its power only for themselves. They shall not have it. What exactly are the uh, differences between your two faiths? Are they irreconcilable? <laughs> The difference is that we want to share the Holy Detonation with everyone, while Deuterium and his Nucleists want to keep it only for the worthy. In other words, themselves. But we are starting to believe they no longer wish to abandon themselves to unity. They are afraid to give up their individuality and become one with the Proteus. They want to be angels instead. Gods when we already have a god. The Proteus says they need to give up their prideful ways and return to the true path of devolution, dissolution, and oneness. I mean, angels aren't gods, they're, they're divine servants of gods. So uh, I don't see how they can't coexist. It really sounds like the main sticking point is the whole turning everyone into a big blob of fleshy protoplasm. I can't really blame people for maybe balking at that particular end goal. What can you tell me about this Deuterium guy? Deuterium was the speaker for the Proteus before he left the true path and refused to become one with the rest of us. Now he leads the Nucleists and speaks for Iridium. Oh, so he was a speaker too. Was that before or after Bezor? How does this whole speaker thing work, anyway? The truly blessed become hard for the uninitiated to understand, so someone with holy insight must translate for them. Thank you, Proteus. I live only to serve you. Hmm. And uh, tell me about Angel Iridium? The Nucleists call her an Ascended, a Radiation Angel. But she is only a human who has mutated to store and release radiation. I suppose one could call her the Nucleists' version of the Proteus, but of course, without the Proteus's wisdom. Oddly, Abbot Deuterium is completely in love with her. So Deuterium and Iridium are in love. That actually does explain a bit. Indeed, and not in the way we love the Proteus or the Great Glow. His is a romantic love. He wants to become a Radiation Angel too, so he can be with her. 
Very true, Proteus. The Proteus says Deuterium would have to be an angel to be with her. Otherwise, her embrace would burn him up like old paper. Gotta say, guys, I'm, I'm starting to think Deuterium might not be the bad guy here. And what are the uh, odds he'll actually change into an angel? Only the Great Glow knows when or if a person will become blessed, or what form they'll take. We Primordialists are all changed, but we are not angels. Instead, we're on our way to becoming like the Proteus. Deuterium and his Nucleists think we're ugly because of that. They think the only acceptable transformation is to become a Radiation Angel. <laughs> it would be just as if, when he changed, Deuterium became like us. It would destroy him. Yeah, you're not really helping your, um image right now but you guys you uh you think you look fine <laughs> not in the least we are beautiful because we are blessed every lump is a gift every growth a badge of belonging proof that we are flowing down the great river of mutation to oneness and enlightenment we are more than beautiful we are magnificent Cool. So anyway, we're uh, we're here from Colorado Springs. Um, if we were to help you retake the Holy Detonation, would you be willing to let us uh, maybe share it with you? The Proteus says the Holy Detonation is a gift to all mankind. If you can convince Deuterium to return and help us open its chamber, find some other way of getting his code. They will happily share its power with the whole world. Super duper. Uh, then uh, I think we're just about done here. So you want us to go kill Deuterium, right? That's what you're awkwardly dancing around? Trying to infer, but not outright say? Despite everything, the Proteus does not wish Deuterium harm. That said, we cannot tolerate anyone standing in the way of our ability to worship in the Holy Chamber. Do what you can, but if that fails, do what you must. Yes, very convincing. Was that second part actually from the Proteus, or was that just an addendum you tacked on yourself? The Proteus suggests you use the Angel Iridium as leverage to reach Deuterium. Deuterium would do anything to get his beloved back, even open the door that protects him. If you have her, he will be forced to negotiate, and she awaits you not 20 yards from us in the cooling pools. Though, as we said earlier, she is, at the moment, dangerously radioactive. Oh yes, that would be a slight issue. I'm assuming you have some sort of suggestion on how we can do this without dying? The Proteus says you should speak to Brother Goiter, our best engineer, about this. Hopefully, he'll have some idea how to transport Iridium safely. When you can, bring her to the power storage facility elevator and use its intercom to tell Deuterium you have her. Be sure to open it for her. When he does, you will ride down with her, and then deal with him. <laughs> the Proteus says, good luck. Yeah, I'm sure that's what he said. Alright, well, let's not look at him anymore. We've got plenty of other slightly more photogenic people to chatter with. Not to mention, of course, a new quest to pursue. Body horror aside, I am very intrigued by what's going on here. I'm also very curious as to what the inevitable twist will be. My current guess is that uh, Deuterium and Iridium are actually the victims, the uh, sympathetic party. Well, hello there. Radiation's blessings to you all. My name's <laughs> Bubo. If you've got a hurt that needs mending, or you're looking for a little extra pep in your step, I'm happy to help. 
Boobo, like the uh, the owl from Clash of the Titans. Classic. What? No, it's because of the swollen nodes all over my body. Big as a cassava melons. It's a sign of the holy radiation's life-given power. Named after an owl? <laughs> the very idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and pretend you're still named after the owl. Because thinking about the other thing will make me vomit until I die. So what have you got? You won't find a better selection of radioactive medicines this side of paradise. Okay, this looks pretty standard. That's a shame. I was uh, I was actually hoping we'd find more new medical items that would actually have a chance of giving us positive or negative mutations. There are like a, a dozen mutations in the game. They're just really hard to get. Hey there, Rangers. Welcome. Folks around here call me Goiter. If you're looking for salvage tech, you've come to the right place. Goiter, it is a pleasure to meet you, because pretty much everyone else here has been some shade of nightmare, and uh, I like your voice. So, Goiter, uh, I've been requested to uh, go and capture the Angel Iridium. Any uh, any idea how I might be able to do that without melting and or dying? Contain Iridium? Whew, that's a tall order. She's already hot in her normal state, but when she fled into that cooling room, she was practically shooting out solar flares. Huh. Now that I think of it, she probably went in there because she was so hot. See, they might look serene, but it hurts to be a radiation angel. They need to offload built-up energy or they'll die, but they can't do it around us or will die. That's what the pool is for. The angels soak in it, and the water safely leaches their energy. In fact, before us and the nucleus split, I was working on a device in there to siphon that energy and... Wait a minute. An idea's coming to me. Really? Is it uh, that device you just mentioned that siphons energy off of uh, radiation angels? Because, yeah, that, that's exactly what we need. Okay, got it. We're gonna turn my siphon into a containment device. To do that, we'll need three things. First, there's a particle accelerator on the lab level that has a voltage regulator tough enough to handle her fluctuations. Rip that out. Second, I'm pretty sure I saw a scatter ray emitter in the shipping room near the loading docks that we can use to distribute our shielding material in a bubble around her. And third, the shield itself. The Nucleus are using the old brig to hold unwilling subjects for their experiments. They've been using a force field projector to keep irradiated captives contained. We'll need the crystal out of that. Bring all that stuff back to me, and I'll whip you up something that'll hold Iridium long enough to get her through the camp and down the elevator to Deuterium. Though, uh, not much longer than that. Oh, wait, hang on. You won't be able to get any of those things without the access code for the elevators in the entrance lobby. Here it is. ADM1N1337. Cute. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess uh, some things just never change. So, uh, where do you get all this stuff, anyway? Mostly it's salvaged from down in the lab area. I repair what I can and repurpose the rest. There was this one time I converted a handheld cyclotron into a hairdryer. <laughs> Straight your short and curlies in two seconds flat. Well, that's fun. I look forward to seeing what we can find down there. So what do you got? Wait a second. Before we get to that, I think I heard Sister Polyp telling you how Father Bezor's gone missing. But I bet she didn't ask you to save him, did she? Uh, no, she uh, repeatedly and very conspicuously did not ask us to save him. Yeah, you've, uh, you pretty much got it. Yeah, well, she wouldn't, see. If he doesn't come back, then she's the speaker permanently, stops being Sister Polyp, and becomes Mother Polyp, and she'd like that just fine. 
Huh. Her ambition outstrips her humanity. Thank you, Bazeppi. You're standing awfully close to that barrel of uh, toxic waste there. The rest of us wouldn't be happy about that. She's a devout primordialist, ain't no denying that, but even her biggest supporters wouldn't call her exactly warm and friendly, more cold and tough. And I don't know, what with deuterium and the nucleus acting up, maybe we need that, but we love Father Bezor. At least most of us do, and we want him back, so... If you find he's still alive down there in the security level, I hope you'll consider bringing him home. We'd appreciate it. Thanks. Sure, I certainly don't see why not. I do like to uh, actually help people from time to time. Now, what did you want to buy? Looks pretty standard. An assorted mix of deployables and some of the new crafting ingredients. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'll do a little more shopping off screen. Hello, friends. I'm Sister Mitosis. I'm sorry you've come at such a difficult time for our congregation, but we're happy you're here. <laughs> at least, we're trying to be. Well, this certainly isn't awkward. So, Miss uh, Mitosis, what do you do around here? Pray, mostly. Or as the Proteus commands. We all pitch in to keep the place going. Foraging, cooking, cleaning, preparing the holy water. Now, uh, Miss Mitosis, I can't help but notice you might be slightly upset. Want to talk about it? Hey, Layla. My friend Pitchblend joined the Nucleus a while ago. I haven't heard from him since, and, and now that we and the Nucleus are fighting, I... I'm not sure I ever will again. If... If you see him, maybe you could convince him to come back to us? You'll know him by the friendship bracelet on his wrist. It's the twin of mine. We found them in the ruins when we were kids, and we've worn them ever since. Yeah, yeah, I think we can do that. Now, uh, this may be a bit awkward, but do you mind if we borrow your bracelet for a while? That would uh, help us identify your friend, and uh, it could help us avoid some pointless tragedy. I don't know. This bracelet is all I have left. It means the world to me. I mean, this may be exactly what we need to actually convince your friend to come back. And I mean, we will, we will return the bracelet either way. Oh, yes. I, I hadn't thought of it like that. Here, take it. I will pray for your success. Great, fantastic. That was easy. Well, we will uh, see you around, Miss Tosis. Goodbye. May the glow light your path through the darkness. Um, I'd actually prefer to avoid that, but, uh, I do appreciate the sentiment. Mitosis Bracelet. This piece of jewelry is one of a matching set, possessed by Mitosis and Pitchblend, her best friend. 50% holy radiation resistance, wow. Well, now I'd like to hold on to this thing until we uh, we actually finish this place, but but we'll we'll see how the quest goes. And there wouldn't be much point in trying to keep it long term because obviously it would be completely useless outside of this one expansion pack. All right, who's next? It's benign. Thanks for getting us inside, friends, and for chasing off Deuterium and the Nucleists. You really saved our butts. 
Well, it was our pleasure, Miss Nine. So, um, tell us about yourself. Like I said outside, I'm Sister Benign. And I probably won't be able to answer many questions for you. I'm just an initiate. So, you're new here. You, you came here by choice. A year or so, I, I think. You lose track of time here in the mountain. I've been wandering since I left Denver. And they took me in. Wait, is this... <laughs> is this, um... Cowboy Curtis's mother? Uh, the, uh, that kid we met back at the Gipper Stronghold? Can't say as we have. Maybe you're thinking of my son, Bill. He's with the Gippers. Folks say he resembles me. Right, right. Cowboy Bill, not Cowboy Curtis. Cowboy Curtis is Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, Bill the Cowboy. We met him back in Denver. Real nice kid. You know, he misses you. He... he does? Leaving him behind was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I knew he wouldn't make it out in the wasteland. I'm so glad to hear he's well been worried about that boy since the day I left Denver. Thank you for easing my mind. Here, take this. I was saving up for when I'd make the trip to Denver and, well, I guess I don't need it anymore. Best to let it go. Wait, so now you don't want to visit your son? Oh, you, uh, you have bad blood with the Gippers, don't you? From one cult to another, right? But the primordialists aren't like those angry cowboys. We love everybody. Don't matter who you are. Yes, they certainly do take the concept of unity very seriously. This is where we live. The Church of the Holy Detonation. Used to be you'd find the whole congregation here, but now it's just us primordialists. Sister Paula can tell you more about why. Okay, thanks. My pleasure, friends. May you walk in the light of the holy detonation. Yeah, she was uh, exiled from Denver for refusing to marry God King Reagan. Hello again, Rangers. I hope your conversation with the, uh, was it the Proteus, Carbuncle? Yes, the Proteus. Aren't they great? Yes, they are very large. Uh, indeed. Anyway, I hope you had a fruitful conversation with them, Rangers. One that advanced our cause. Um... Yeah, I'd, I'd say it went okay. We'll see where this takes us. Well, all right. I suppose that's not bad news. How else can we help you? Yeah, man. <laughs> Anything you need. Well, what can you tell us about the Nucleus? We're still trying to wrap our head around this whole thing. They think we're heretics. Which is pretty funny, you know, since they're the ones who are heretics. They want to be gods. When we've already got a god. The, the holy detonation. That's pretty much exactly how Polyp put it. Which means they're either of a like mind, or that he's just parroting what she said. So you really think that thing's a god? Of course it is. It's our holiest of holies. And unlike other gods, it's right there. In all its glory. There's nothing ineffable about the holy detonation, yeah? It's tangible. You can feel it from here. Yeah, that's radiation. Uh, I certainly can. It's, uh, unnerving. It's wonderful. It warms us like, like the fire of creation, you know? It's the cosmos frozen in the instant of its birth and pulsing with life. It brings us wisdom and strength through the power of its blessed radiation. Which is why it's such bullshit that deuterium is keeping us from it. 
Any suggestions on uh, how we should deal with deuterium? Well, I overheard the Proteus tell you that bringing iridium to him might give you some bargaining power, and I can't think of a better way. He'd do anything for her. Interesting. Yeah, exactly what Polyp suggested. What can you uh, tell us about Sister Polyp? Oh, she's the best. Uh, super hard worker and uh, super dedicated to the church. Ever since Father Bezor's disappearance, she's been the Proteus's speaker. Cool. Uh, hey, Carbuncle, you uh, you said you'd give us food and supplies if we helped you. Uh, so. Oh, uh, well, I, well, uh, I guess I've got a few things on me you could have. Well, let me see. Uh, here, and thanks. What, did you not think I would ask? Uh, the others might have better stuff, but uh, they'll probably want to trade for it. I mean, within the church, we all share equally. But for outsiders, well... There's things we need sometimes that we can't get here, so... Uh, Sick Rick is our weapons guy, and he, he actually does some trading out in the world for us. Sister Melanoma scavenges and repairs armor. Brother Goiter is our tech guru. And Bubo is our medic, if you're hurting. Such... Curious names you all have. That is certainly a very diplomatic way to put it, Curie. <laughs> also, uh, you may want to uh, get your hands on a radiation suit if you're gonna hang out here. Just saying. Keep at it, Rangers. Walk in the glow, friends. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass, but thanks. So what's going on here? Yes, of course. I I say. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I was expecting there. Grimy cassette. Written on the side of this cassette are the words Father Bezor tells it like it is. My tumor pal accessory kit. A small pouch containing bandages, gauze, googly eyes, and a very small hat. Gross, but I also um, applaud any efforts to make those things less of a nightmare. I'm not asking you to believe in the holy detonation, brothers and sisters. Belief isn't necessary. You just have to look through that window over there and see its blazing glory for yourselves. I'm not even asking you to believe in the miracle of devolution. Though if you look around at some of our congregation, you can see that for yourselves too. <laughs> oh, we're all on our way. What I am asking is one simple question. Are you lonely? Have you always felt isolated and unconnected to the rest of humanity inside the prison of your own flesh? Are you afraid you'll never be able to truly know another person and that no other person will ever be able to truly know you? Oh, well, friends, oneness is the end to all of that. Oneness means you'll never be lonely again. You'll never be without love, companionship, or the warm welcome of family. You'll never be misunderstood, never hated for being the other, never abandoned or forgotten. This is the promise of oneness, brothers and sisters, and the Proteus is the proof. Ho oh, ho ho, one day, when the holy detonation wills it, we will all be them, and they will be us, and we will be one, together and happy forever and ever. Amen. He certainly makes a compelling pitch. Hola, Rangers! Praise be to the bomb and shit. You, uh, you looking for some firepower? Sick Rick can hook you up. 
Okay, before we go any further, you're, you're not contagious or anything, right? Nah, nothing like that. Father Bezor started calling me Sick Rick because the uh, blessed radiation ain't twisting me like the others. Just, you know, bad luck, I guess. Yeah, come to think of it, you, uh, you actually look like you're completely unaffected by all this. Keep it down, will ya? People will hear you. Look, I joined the cult for the dinero. Get me? They let me loot this place of tech and trade it for supplies out in the world. And don't care if I pocket the difference. Uh, everybody's happy. And yeah, uh, you know, to make them happy, I do all the blessings and, and rituals and shit, but I don't drink the water. And I gobble down the anti-rad mushrooms like they were jelly beans, because I don't want my damn face to fall off. But let's keep this between friends, okay? I got a pretty good thing going here, and I don't want them kicking me out for saying no thanks to the great glow. Uh, here, how about I cut you a discount on my stock? Absolutely. Rick, I was not trying to strong arm you, but I will absolutely accept that uh, unsolicited discount. What was that you said about mushrooms? There's a lab down in research that grows them. Harder to get a hold of now that the primordialists took over that level, but worth dodging their patrols for. Keeps my skin as smooth as a newborn babe's. Ah, the uh, Mikeology lab. The culmination of the mushroom guy saga. Sadly, he's uh, still cooling his heels in a prison cell, but uh, I am curious to see what we find there. Everything's in good shape. Not too hot, not too cold, if you get my drift. I don't, but uh, I don't care enough to ask. Uranium crossbow. An improvised crossbow that fires shards made from the same radiation-absorbing crystals found in the cultist's collection rods. Leaves targets a bit less glowy, but maybe a bit more holy. Oh. Okay, 100% chance to reduce holy radiation stacks. I know that's intended to reduce the stacks on enemies, but I wonder if we could use that on ourselves. Because these things are a lot easier to find than holy batteries, which uh, we have yet to encounter. Purging Grenade. This canister of compressed air isn't technically a grenade, but trials by Cheyenne R&D determined that soldiers were 72% more likely to use it if they called it one. Yes, that does track. Uh, no actual details on what it does, but I assume that removes negative conditions. Nuke Grenade. The power of the atom. Now in your pocket. I actually really don't want that in my pocket, but uh, I will certainly take that. Um, let's hold off on that. That's pretty pricey. Though it's not like we can't afford it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll revisit the shops off screen. There's actually lots of stuff I'd like to grab from these guys before we move on. This is, again, our final adventure, so no reason to hold back. Hello there! Blessings of the glow be with you! I'm Sister Melanoma. If you're looking for a little protection, I'm sure I've got something that will help. Yeah, hi. I was uh, told that you could explain these weird blobs that are crawling all over this place? Oh, that's a tumor colony. Flesh tumors are cancerous growths that flake off from the proteus sometimes and scooch around on their own. For some reason, they seem to form colonies around doors and crates. We don't know why. Father Bezor's discovered that he can make them disperse by playing tunes for them on his flute. Huh. I did not anticipate that. <laughs> this one's weird, though, because Bezor hasn't been able to find a tune to disperse it. 
Must have eclectic taste. Okay, well that uh I guess I guess we'll look for music. Thank you. Where do you uh, get all this armor? The holy detonation provides. There's all kinds of useful stuff down on the lower levels. Plenty of dead explorers too. Right. Usually we just share this stuff amongst ourselves when we need it. But seeing as you're outsiders, I figure I should probably charge you. We'll put the money toward our missionary work. Well, let's uh, have a look. Of course. Let me know if there's anything you like. Pre-war helmet. The sunglasses aren't standard kit with a helmet, but they probably should be. Hmm. Pre-war armor. The Kevlar vest and tactical camo aren't the most protective, but they make you feel cool, and that's what really matters. Pre-war tack pants. Thick trousers, shin guards, and heavy boots make you ready for both combat and the local department store. And then a modest assortment of various weapon and armor mods. That's nice. Especially since we can now upgrade these things to uh, higher tier mods. Our gear might actually be overdue for some upgrades. I'll have to give it a gander. Right, so we can't do anything with that yet. I imagine we'll have to find some sort of sonic or musical device to lull it into complacency. You know, as happens. Alright, folks. We're pushing the hour mark, and uh, we've talked to pretty much everyone available, so I feel like this is a good place to leave off. I will say, um, while I could live without the nightmarish body horror and the constant ear violation, that is awful, um, I do find the setting, the story, the lore here, fascinating. It's a very intriguing take on a post-apocalyptic cult. And, uh... That tape with Father Bezor actually does almost make them sound appealing. I mean, not for me. I, I would never go for this. This is a nightmare, but, uh... But, you know, you can almost kind of understand why they would attract some disenfranchised people. Like, uh, Benign. Anyway, we'll, uh, hit the pause button for now. I'll rummage through our inventory, see what needs upgrading, and then do another pass around the room. Hit all these shops again, and buy pretty much everything. And we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wasteland 3, The Cult of Holy Detonation, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Which is why it's such bullshit that Deuterium is keeping us from it. <laughs>